this will bring us uh, to uh, the larger point, uh, which is that when we, we start making uh, longer predictions uh, and get into real numbers and get into the things that we might really want to know, then the, we'll see that this method is, is not very accurate. Uh, it does not uh it does not produce uh much that is like what really happened uh and so uh the larger point is that we need to have a little humility about our tools there's a false precision uh to these calculations it's easy enough to to use these numbers and to think that uh, you are producing uh, real predictions of the future. And we shouldn't be fooled into expecting that because our techniques are sophisticated, our, our predictions will come true. Uh, and, and that would point maybe to my, to my largest point, uh, that we human beings are, are not very good at using our experiences uh, to uh, understand what's happening now and to anticipate what's going to happen in the future and that we need to develop uh, two different senses, right? the way in which uh, numbers uh, help to make our experience more accurate, help us to make uh, better decisions from our experience, which is distorted in many ways, uh, but that the, the tools uh, have to be used with the proper humility, uh, or they... Uh, they will not be good tools. You have to know what the tools can and cannot do. They help, but you don't want to slip into the error of thinking that they help more than they actually do uh, because they're definite uh, and, and because they're complicated and because it takes a little, a little intelligence to understand what they, what they are and what they say. So in looking at the back to the table for March, we see... To small numbers on the first three days of March, uh, and a large number at the end of the month. So this is a, a a situation that is in essence hard to predict. How could you go from having less than a hundred cases uh, to having almost two hundred thousand cases, and how could you know how that would go when you're still in the first few days of March? Uh, if we look at the uh, number for the second, we we could say. Uh, just using a simple calculation that we're, we've got, a, we're going up by about 18% in that day. We've got 118% change. Uh, and if we think, well, uh, since that's what we see, what are we going to have uh, at the end of the month? Uh, and if you just think, well, we'll have an 18% increase every day. There are 29 days left in the month, so we'll just multiply them. Uh, we end up with a number like this. Uh, so very small compared to the number we actually got. And we can say, well, that's not a very good prediction. And we can say, well, it's not a very good prediction because we're using the methods in the wrong way. Uh, that uh, would be uncompounded. And in fact, it would assume that it's those 89 cases that are producing new cases uh, for the whole month. And it ignores the possibility that uh, there'll be increase for other reasons because of testing. New people will come in that has the disease. Uh, uh, but also it ignores that the people who get it today can infect other people next week. And before the month is done, uh, the people who weren't sick on the first uh, will be making other people sick. Uh, so we need to compound uh, and we can use our original simple compounding formula. Uh, we have, uh, let's assume that uh, there's no compounding during the day, uh, that there's a simple 18% change every day, uh, and that the people who get sick in the morning have no effect on the, on the people who come down with a disease or are discovered to have the disease in the afternoon. Um, so there's no compounding. Uh, but still, we'd have to take uh, our change to the 29th power, and that would reflect that the, uh, that the cases, uh, the number of cases grow 
uh, as they grow. Uh, what's happened in the past uh, adds its power to affect what happens in the future. Uh, and then we get still a number that's uh, very much different from what we actually got, what actually happened. Um, you can see uh, it's about 15 times too small, uh, but more realistic than our first, uh, than this first erroneous way. Uh, and if we use the continual compounding, now we're just going to assume that the uh, population, uh, as it grows, it uh, instantly adds its power, and each, each new case instantly adds its power to create new cases. Uh, we can calculate. Uh, and it turns out that that more uh, sophisticated method uh, gives us a number about the same uh, as the daily compounding method in fact, a little bit less accurate, and they're both uh, rather severely inaccurate because we're trying to extrapolate, we're trying to figure out what will happen at the end of the month with small numbers uh, and just a short period of time. Um, uh, now, the the thing we need to consider, having gotten not very useful numbers, uh, is what can we learn about the, the value of our prediction, predicting methods? Uh, we can see that if you, if you imagine living through the first week of March, uh, uh, clearly something is happening, the numbers are growing, uh, and they're growing at a rate which makes us expect something substantial, uh, but in absolute terms, given the size of the population, about one-third of a billion in the United States. Uh, in absolute terms, the, the numbers are very small. Uh, how can we predict? Well, uh, if you looked at the end of the first week of March, consider what happened from the 5th to the 6th rather than from the 1st to the 7th. Uh, now there's uh, a very high rate of change. And you could think, well... Uh, if we have 331 cases on the sixth day of March, there will be 25 days left in, in March. How many are we going to have at the end of, of March if we're increasing by almost half per day? Uh, and then we get also what turns out to be a wildly inaccurate number. The uh, simple compounding method and the continual compounding method are staying close to one another. Uh, the difference between them is not so much a difference between uh, methods uh, as uh, a difference of the degree of rounding. We can see that the later digits, the smaller decimal points, are, are not really relevant to our guesses. We're going to be way off no matter uh, how accurate that rate number is. Uh, we would, in fact, expect the continual compounding rate to be a little larger. Um, uh, but because of rounding, it's smaller. But still, uh, in that first week of March, the, we can make predictions. Uh, our predictions turn out uh, to have nothing to do with reality or, or very little to do with reality. They're way too low in the first couple days. And they're way too high a few days later. Um, but uh, there is some accuracy to them. Uh, we can see that uh, a, an increase of 46% per day uh, is a disastrous level, uh, and that an increase of 18% per day uh, is still uh, not good. Uh, uh, still a problem, a severe problem to, to be dealt with. Uh, but the, the problem much more manageable uh, at the 18% level than at the 46% level. Uh, and while the numbers are not very accurate, that in itself is a great gain uh, for our experience. Because uh, just seeing the cases come in 
if we don't have any numerical analysis, we're bound to uh, to be wildly inaccurate, even even less accurate than those numbers, uh, as our experience plays on our emotions. Uh, we bound to dismiss the case because it, the numbers are small and it doesn't affect us, or, or to think that it has uh, a life-ending, earth-shaking importance if it if it does come close to us. Uh, and the numbers, although we have to treat them with a certain humility, you know, the numbers can help guide our experience so that we at least stay in the in in the realm of reality you know, without uh, slipping off to uh, uh, either to complacency or panic.